hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Nicolas Bourg. I'm chief technical officer and co-founder of Fablight, uh, which is a French company that develops nanoscopy method for uh, biological research. So I would like to start by thanking Olympus for inviting me to present our solutions and how we can, what is our solutions to offer uh, biological labs to uh, image samples at nanoscale. So, so today I will talk about the technology that we are developing uh, more specifically, that is a single molecule localization microscopy. So I will talk first about that. The second point of my presentation will be about the applied solutions to reach the highest nanoscopy results. And I want to uh, discuss af uh, after uh, the solutions about some new innovation that we have developed and that is already integrate in, integrated in our solution to improve nanoscopy throughput. And I will uh, finish about some application about nanoscopy. So single molecule localization microscopy is in fact a nanoscopy techniques that break the diffraction limit. So in standard microscopy, the limit of uh, resolution is typically between 250 nanometer and 300. So th that's the resolution of confocal microscopy. And to break the diffraction limit, there is di three different methods. In fact, that's the ISM methods so for uh, that is like the structure elimination microscopy, spinning disk, uh, riskal confocal and soft methods that break the diffraction limit and that offer uh, two times improvement in, re in special resolutions. That's what we usually call the super resolution methods. And there are two different nanoscopy strategy that is the state met that the state strategy that offer five time improvement of resolution. So you can reach 50, around 50 nanometer on special resolution. And the best nanoscopy technique which uh, Ablight work on is the single molecule localization microscopy, so SMLM, that offer 20 times improvement in special resolutions. Uh, and more specifically, we can reach 10 nanometer resolutions. So I, will, I want to highlight also that those methods, TED and single molecule, were uh, the, the inventor of those methods were awarded by the Chemistry Nobel Prize in 2014. So, here it is an uh, acting image of, uh, of a cos cell 7, uh, where you can see on the left side uh, a standard wide field image where you can see structures, but you cannot see ultra structures like thinner structures that you can see on the right side. So on the right side is a, a single molecule localization microscopy image that we are created with our system. And typically uh, the, the single molecule localization microscopy was so was invented in 2006, and as I said, was no, awarded by the Chemistry Nobel Prize in 2014. And this is a wide field turf-based method. So com compared to stead microscopy, which is a confocal-based method, here the single molecule SMLM method is wide field-based. So there is three strategies that is named usually palm, storm, and paint-like methods. And that method are exactly uh, working on the same principle. Uh, that is, in fact, the localization of each single molecule, molecule of each single molecule of the sample, and this is based on image reconstruction. So typically, what is the problem of the spatial resolution? So, as I said before, the spatial resolution of a, a standard microscope is limited by two, two, two hundred nanometer. And in fact, the main issue is that each single flow for emits in the same time in uh, during the acquisition of the, the acquisition of the camera. So the idea to break the diffraction limit is to sep uh, to to separate in time uh, the emission of each, of each single flow for in order to be able to detect each single molecule in uh, in a in a vol in diffraction volume. So when you do that, you will, you, when you see a single spot, you are pretty sure that is a single molecule. And if you look localize the center of, of this molecule, you can be precise at around 10 nanometer, and you can reconstruct that image. So technically, it, look, it looks like that. So that's a storm image right now about on the left side, 
that is the what we say blinking images about a single molecule that is Alexa 647 that label microtubule of cos 7 and you can see that here each single spot that you see it's a single molecule and basically what we do we localize each single molecule with a precision that is that depends on the number of photons and the and the, the size of the the transport function and you can see on the right side that we can reconstruct a uh, single molecule localization microscopy images with, uh, let's say, 10 nanometer localization precisions. So here we could definitely break the diffraction limits on um, uh, by separating time the emission of each single flow force. So the idea is that we acquired between 5,000 and 100,000 images to reconstruct a single image at the end. So this is here an image of clatin coated pit. So on the left side, this is a wide field image limited by the diffraction, and the right side, the 2D nanoscopy, nanoscopy image of uh, more specifically a storm configuration, where you can see definitely the, clo the clatin coated pits uh, more precisely at nanoscale level. So, but the fact is, the, so as I, I show you, is that the idea is that we make it bings flow for and we localize them, but to achieve that result, to achieve the best result, the nanoscopy results, it's not only that. We need to masterize several parameters from optical setup, sample preparations, uh, some uh, software analysis, and for the PSF detection. And in fact, if you to reach the best result, the, the best uh, to get the best uh, nanoscopy data, you need to masterize each. Uh, steps of from simple preparation to data analysis through uh, data, uh, data imaging. And in fact, you can regroup that or its uh, properties by different groups, software groups, chemistry, hardware and biology. And you need to be, uh, you need to, to focus on each part to be able to, to get the best resolutions. And that's the why we are uh, developing different solutions in Abelai 2 from Sample preparation to data analysis and imaging. So, the first step and the first first step of the imaging workflow is prepare the sample as always in fluorescence microscopy. But now we need to focus more on the sample preparation to have the best structure that is that are that are preserved uh, at the nanoscopy level. So we have developed the Ablight Research Department to help on that preparation. Uh, on that preparation of the samples. After the preparation of the sample, there is the imaging steps. And of course, we are, as we are, in fact, the founders of Ablight, we are all physicists and more uh, specifically op uh, opticians. We are, of course, developing some new add-on and uh, or turnkey, uh, turnkey setups uh, to upgrade a microscope into single molecule localization microscope. And at the end, when you get the data, you need to localize them, treat, uh, uh, analyze, localize them, analyze them to exploit and extract some new data at the nanoscopy level. So we also have developed the Ablai data divisions that offer an all-in-one software design for acquisition, processing, and ana analysis. So I will talk about its steps and what is uh, our offer. Uh, to in to masterize each step. So for in terms of um, sample preparation, the first step is label the sample. And in fact, if you look at the the, the scheme here, if you if you look at the scheme, what you you see you see that if you label each spot that uh, each part of the A of the sample, and you localize them, you can retrieve at high resolution the A. Right, but the fact is, however, if you don't have, uh, if you don't label each molecule of the sample and you localize only the fluorophore that is that are, that are on the sample, you will have uh, a nanoscopy image that, in fact, is low resolution and you don't see the A anymore. So you need to be to focus on you need to masterize the fixation, the, the size of the linker, so antibody nanoscopy, the concentrations, and the fluorophores. That's the first steps, and I will tell you what we offer on that. The second the second point about sample preparation, you need to be sure that the the sample what we say is blinking well. So if you look at the the 
on the on the left uh, side of the on the left the left movie sorry you see some blinky movie but you cannot you cannot distinguish very well the single molecule uh, and the right side you can see exactly the same uh, movie but here you see uh, each spot that is a single molecule and you are sure that if you detect one spot you are sure that is a single molecule and in fact at the end if you just look at the results that you can get with bad blinking bad single molecule blinking and good single molecule behavior you see that the result is quite different so on the left side you see exactly the same sample but you cannot resolve very very well the microtubule uh, sample uh, network sorry of the cells and on the right side uh, with the good blinking uh, behavior you can really break the diffraction limit and achieve the best resolution in nanoscopy so our solution is for the sample labeling we offer some advices and protocols that for free the idea is that we offer uh, our know-how that we have acquired several 10 years ago with all the, the, the company about sample preparations we also offer some samples that are already uh, ready to use for training and calibrations uh, of the microscope and also uh, training about the sample preparation and we are offering uh, also a blinking pad for non-adherent cells. So for instance, the, the bacteria that needs to be uh, stick on the corrosive. So we are offering also a blinking, uh, a blinking pad to help to look at, at the nanoscopy level, the bacteria. And that's a new product that we are offering also. We are now offering a fixation and labeling kit optimized for nanoscopy specifically. And for the blinking, uh, for blink, for the blinking behavior of the molecule, we are offering the first solution and the only solution that you can find on the market. What we call the smart kit distant buffer that is ready to use uh, a buffer. So you just need for 30 second preparation time. And thanks to that, you are sure that the flow flow will blink. That is compatible with more than 10 compatible dyes, and that we, thanks to that product, you can be sure that the reproducibility of the blinking. So in terms of sample preparations, we offer some advices and some product that help you to be sure that everything will be good in terms of the, uh, in the, in the sample uh, domain. In terms of ablight, uh, in, uh, on, on terms of imaging, sorry, we are offering two types of product, the SAFE 180 that you can see on the right side and the SAFE 360. So the SAFE 180, is a, you can you will see that after, but offer the largest field of view. Uh, so now we can uh, get 150 by 150 micrometer square uh, images at the nanoscopy level and homogeneous illumination, and you can uh, reach 10 nanometer in X, Y, and 30 nanometer in Z. So this you can offer the free the three D resolution, and I will see you later that. And of course, and I will show you that it's also integrating a turf as it is a turf based system and uh, and uh, and i will show you i will show you some data and the safe 360 that you can see on the right side on the left side sorry you can also you keep the same properties of the safe 180 but now with the that product you can achieve the best 3d resolution and just, uh, a single and we also are offering a single multicolor imaging strategy so basically and technically and practically, how does it fit to the microscope? So the SAFE 180, it's a camera port microscope that you can connect to a camera a camera part of the microscope. So for instance, here with the Olympus AX83, and that is also compatible with other microscope like AX70 uh, series. And on that product, you, you have already the excitation and the detection of the same product. As you can see here, you have the excitation with a variable angle illumination. You have an, an input for optical fiber. You have a dietary cube that can send the light through the, the microscope, and you have and you can connect an, a single SIMOS camera. Right? So this for the safe 360, it's a safe 180, but with a dual cam extension. So you still keep the excitation with the the turf illumination, but now you can see that we have a dual cam extension, so you can connect two different cameras and you have a lot of options to do 3D, multicolor imaging, and something that I will show you later. So what, 
this is some example about uh, two, the two products I show you are installed in different research labs. Uh, on the left side, you can see uh, Safe 360 installed in IX83, and also that also has a FV3000 Olympus confocal microscope. So on that station, you, you can do uh, confocal images, and also on the same sample, you can do single molecule localization microscopy, and you can reach nanoscopy level of with that solutions. On the on the right side, you can see a Nix eighty three and a safe one eighty. So on that on that solutions, you can have turf elimination and single molecule localization microscopy. So this is the simplest on the right and the let's say more complex solution, but the most, the most uh, that offer the, the best performances. So with that product, on the, you can reach uh, our standard field of view now is 150 by 150 square micrometer. So you can see on the left, on the left images that now we are offering, let's say nine, between 10 times more field of view compared to the market standard field of view. So now we can, have uh, you can look at different cells in one shot uh, uh, thanks to the the, the uh, thanks to the our elimination method that I will describe to you later and so that's a uh, features that you can reach retrieve on the safe 180 and a safe 360 and on the right side you can see uh, for the first time uh, on the market a product that offer you in real time and in simultaneously free color images uh, at the nanoscopy level. So for instance, you can see here, the microtubulin in magenta, the microtubulin in green, and some protein of the nucleus in blue. And that is a feature that I will show you also later on the innovation part uh, that is uh, installed in the SAFE 360. So, and of course, uh, as I show you, you need to uh, you need to detect molecule and localize uh, the localize the molecule to reconstruct in real to reconstruct the nanoscopy data. So we have developed a complete software solution from acquisition to data analysis. In the from the acquisition point of view, we are controlling the turf angle, so you can do in epilimination, ILO and turf easily. You can control different camera from Amamatsu, Rendo, PCOs. You can choose the region of interest that you want to acquire, and you can acquire some data. I will show you also that later, that you can image at uh, 800 frames per second. And on that acquisition software, you have, in real time, you have the, the nanoscopic data. So you don't need, thanks to our software, you do need to wait to process the data after the acquisition to get the results. So in real time, you have the results during the acquisitions. And on the analysis part, you have, in that is, is in the same software, you can visualize the, the, the localization and the, the images in 3D. You can export the image in, in TIFF format that is compatible with commonly used software, so, such as, for instance, uh, Fiji, Image, and you can have different statistics about localization distribution, measuring tool, and now we are also, since, one year or two years ago, different clustering analysis, single particle tracking, and I will tell you about spectral demixing. So the software offer, offer a complete solution for acquire the data, uh, to acquire the data, sorry, and data analysis. And this is the, on the same software. So you will have the complete, you have the complete solution from acquisition to analysis. And so now I want to show you some new innovation that we will, today I want to highlight because in fact single molecule localization microscopy is a slow technique because you need to acquire several thousand frames uh, to reach a nanoscopy level. So we we have developed two different innovations to solve that and improve the throughput of the nanoscope. So first that's the method that we have named Esther that's improve the field of view and the speed of single molecule localization microscopy. So the problem is that, the problem is that, the, sorry, as I show you, the blinking behavior depends on the buffer that you want to use, that you will use to start the blinking. But in fact, it's also dependent of the laser prover uh, and the irradiance that you send to the sample, right? So you can see here that in the center 
on the center, the blinking is better than from the edge. And the reason of that is that, is that the lasers that is required for single molecule localization microscopy show a Gaussian shape radiance. So the power is higher in the center, and it's less, less, less higher, uh, less, less uh, uh, lower, more lower, sorry, in the in the edge of the um, of the eliminations, which means that in fact you have a very very nice resolution in the center, but at the end you you degrade your resolution. So the 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 problem of that is that now Gaussian eliminations trigger inhomogeneous blinking and trigger uh, in inhomogeneous uh, resolution. So we have a field dependent resolutions. So to to have quantitative analysis of the data, it's drastically improved. So the the idea is that we need to homogeneous that irradiance to uh, to be sure that is uh, is homogeneous, homogeneous in the resolution. And as you can see here, in fact, the Gaussian shape, the Gaussian elimination is smaller than the camera field of view of the offered by SIMOS camera that is now very highly used on single molecule localization microscopy. So what we have developed, it's a new excitation strategy. So I, as I said, we named Esther. You can find on the preprint paper uh, submitted by Adriamo, our PhD student, that has developed a new strategy to homogeneize the illuminations. Here you see the standard, let's say, standard illumination methods to do to do turf illumination and for and wide field, uh, wide field illumination. But you can see on the left side that we have a 2D galvanometer meter, uh, scanners uh, to, uh, that replace a mirror. And if you don't move the 2D galvanometer scanners, you excite in the center. But if you move the, the, the 2D galvanometers, you can move the beam. And the idea is that if you move very fastly uh, the, the, the Gaussian beam, you can reach an immune sorry, ilum, homogeneous illuminations. And thanks to this technology, you can choose the region of interest you want. You are sure that you have exactly the same irradiance for each single molecule you want to image. That is achromatic and that is still turf compatible. So the idea is that you use a sm small Gaussian beam, you scan it very fastly and you, you, you get a top hat illumination that is homogeneous. And the scanners that we use offer uh, we can image at 200, 200 frames per second. So the scanning frequency for the complete field of view is 200 hertz. So that's the idea to achieve uh, super resolution data and but the complete field of view. So basically, that's that's some images that we have acquired with that technique. So you can see on on the left side. So neurons uh, from Christophe Lotterier labs, from Neurocytia labs in Marseille, that has our system, that you can see now, you can uh, 200 by 200 micron field of view of neurons. And you can see that on the left, on the right corner, left uh, bottom right corner, you can see if you do the front, the um, Fourier transform of that image, you can, we can see that we have a 190 nanometer frequency that is in fact come from the bands width of the neurons. And what is very nice is that all the neurons that of, so of the axon from the neurons that we have uh, image, now we can see the bandwidth and with the same resolution from the center to the edge, right? And so on the, on the right side now, uh, I show you also uh, exactly uh, the same field of view, so 200 by 200 micron field of view, but in turf illumination. So it, this is not single molecule localization microscopy, but this is turf, standard turf illumination. And you can see that you have exactly an homogeneous illumination on the complete field of view. And I want to highlight that the exposure time is five milliseconds. So our method is still compatible for live cell imaging. So you can still image with uh, higher uh, throughput, uh, uh, live cell imaging, and you can also do single molecule localization microscopy. And thanks to this method, so we definitely improve the throughput because we now, now we image the complete field of view in the same time that we usually use before, let's say five years ago, right? But thanks to this method, Esther, you see that we use the scanners. And if you choose, if you, just keep the same power of the laser that you use, but you reduce the size 
of the, the, the shape of the illumination, you increase the irradiance. So if you complete, if you, so you use, a, for instance, a laser power of 300 milliwatts, but you, you completely illuminate the whole sample, you will have an irradiance close to one kilowatt per, cent, per square centimeter. And at that, at that speed, in fact, we realize that the blinking rate is slower, but it's still compatible with the high frequency imaging speed from camera. So at, at that, level, at that uh, field of view, you can still acquire that one or frames per second. However, if we reduce the size, the irradiance increase by a factor of six, around 60, we can reach 60 kilowatt per square centimeter. And we realize also that at that irradiance, the blinking rate increased, which is really nice, in fact, because if you, and at that field of view, you can also speed up the acquisition time of the camera. So basically now we can also offer acquisition speed of 500 frames per second. That's the first time uh, to, that you can now, that's the first, uh, the first time you can achieve some, uh, get some nanoscopy data at that speed. So typically, with uh, the small field of view and high regions, you can get some 30K frames uh, at less than one minute acquisition, which is very, very high speed. And if you want to acquire the complete field of view, you will need more than 300 seconds, but you will increase also the field of view. So this is the result that we have got uh, for 500 frames per second of clatin coated pits and in 3D. So that the 3D, um, the 3D that we use, it's the TESI technology that we have developed in the labs uh, several years ago. I will not discuss about that later, but you can find the description of, on the paper on Nature Communication, published by Gabriel and et al. But you can see here, in fact, that you have in 3D the, uh, the uh, 3D super resolution. And I want to stress out that we have acquired at 500 frames per second. And the, the field of view is still very, uh, it's still uh close to the standard market uh, the field of view uh, the sorry it's still close to the field of view that you can find in the standard market okay so thanks to that thanks to this aster method so now you can use you can still use your standard laser uh, smlm laser because we just need 300 let's say less than 300 milliwatts sorry you can now image up to 100 by 100 uh, 150 and 150 micron there is no compromise at all in the acquisition speed because we can be at 100 frames per second at full frame, and we can also up to 800 frames per second at 25 by 25 micron. And that's not compromised at all in the special re special resolution, sorry. And you can find that, that technology in the in the two solutions, in Safe 360 and Safe 360 in fully integrated in our in instruments. So, Thanks to that, you increase, we increase the spin and the field of view. But the, the issue of single molecule was, oh, is it possible to image multicolor? That is very, very important, in fact, in biological research. So to make multicolors, we can think about, okay, can we do exactly what we do in standard fluorescence, which means that we label with one fluorophore that emits at one wavelength and another fluorophore that emits at a, a lower wavelength. So for instance, here, Alexa 6555 and Alexa 647 that label microtubule and uh, platinum coated pit. And oh, is it possible to do that? Yes, we can do that. We, uh, we can do that, but you need you need a good uh, blinking buffer. Though. So the ab light is uh, can offer a good blinking buffer, but the problem is that the Alexa 555 is not as efficient that as Alexa 647. So, the, which means that at the end, the resolution with the, of the flow for of the structures that is labeled with Alexa 647, so it will be definitely better than Alexa 555. That's something that is not so a good solution. In fact, if you want to do very nice localization data, uh, data analysis at nanoscale level, but there is different also uh, issue about if you image one structure and after another another structure and you and uh, you can, uh, let me remind you that we need several minutes to acquire one frame and uh, one structure and another, another, uh, another structures. You have a lot of drift that between sequential color acquisition that you cannot, in fact, very control it. And you have also high chromatic aberration that is not 
uh, that is very high uh, significant at nanoscale level. So the idea is that to uh, to 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 bypass that issue of standard multicolor imaging, the idea is that okay, can we image flow for that is emitting in the same wavelength range and distinguish that after optically and with data analysis. So yes, we can do that. And that was some paper that was published by Ilaria Testa, uh, RLS and uh, Elgo Eras uh, a few years ago that showed some that is possible, yes. The idea is we, we use the stand, uh, Alexa, we can't, we, sorry, we still use the Alexa 647, right? And we also use the CF660, and sorry, and the CF680. And if you look at uh, the emission wave uh, bandwidth on, on the right side, you can see that they are emitting the same range, but they are just separated by 20 nanometer. And the good thing of that is you excite with the same laser, they are, uh, they have exactly the same blinking efficiency, which means that you you will have the same resolution if we are able to demix them. So that's the idea of the spectral demixing methods. So can how can we demix the image if we? So how can we demix flow for us to have multicolor imaging? So basically, the idea is that we insert in a module a, da, a demulti, uh, demixing dichroic that splits the light in two parts. So each fluorescence of each dye will be split in two wavelength parts. So if we put a dye that split the light into, so uh, in the center of the CF660, you will have some light on the one camera that is coming from, uh, sorry, we, we will have some light that is coming from each single molecule, but at different pho uh, photon doses. So typically, so the, the, the idea is that we use the safe 360, we install a demixing dichroic, we split the light in two, and we imagine two different cameras. So you, you have in the camera one, the shorter wavelengths, and you have in camera two, longer wavelengths. And typically, how is it, go, how is it working? So in the camera one, you see here in the single molecule images, in camera two, is, uh, the same single molecule images, but you can clearly see that there is different photon rates. Uh, for different cameras. And you see that you see exactly the same molecule, right? But uh, at different intensities. So, so the, the idea is we localize on, two, on the two different cameras, we measure the number of photons and we calculate what we call the total parameter, the total ratio, which is the, the ratio between the number of photons from camera one and camera two. And if you compute that ratio, you see that it's clearly uh, uh, that clear, that are clearly separated. So the idea is that if we label uh, if we label the sample with the with these structures uh, with this proof, or sorry, we can demix them easily because you can see that that ratio is clearly separated. And so that is the result, in fact. So on the left side, you can see that here we use tubulin with CF660 and clatrin with Alexa 647. You can see that the, the, the same, the image that you see clatrin and tubulin is the same, uh, the overlay images. You can see the tubulin image and the clatrin image. And I want to stress out that we have imaged that just in the same time, we just uh, demix in real time. So what I can say is that we have a cost of less than 10% for that um, combinations. For the in the lower combination, so we can reach uh, we can use tubulin 660 and clatrin 680, and now you can see that the cost of is less than three percent. And the best combination, of course, is tubulin 647 and clatrin 680. So Alexa 647 and CF 680, you can label what you want, in fact. And now we have a cost of less than one percent. And of course, you can combine them to get three colors images. So now you can. Uh, three colors images. So sorry, but the mat the, mat the mitochondria is in magenta, the tubulin is in green, and the nucleus protein is in blue. And now you can uh, have in the real time three color single molecule localization data at nanoscale level. And but you can also da do that in 3D. So you can see on the right side that's the 3D. So that's microtubulin and clatrin. That the color code means the 3D. And I will show you a video about uh, some uh, a region of interest about 
platrin and mic uh, microtubule. So you can clearly see on that uh, results that the microtubule and the platrin are clearly separated, and we can still resolve the, the, the both structure at the nanoscopy level. So typically, the spectral demixin method is a really multicolor storm that is very fast and easy in robust imaging of two and three targets. That is free of chromatic aberrations because we use exactly the same wavelength range. The crosstalk is minimal because you can you have a crosstalk of one percent at at the best, and that is fully integrated in the ablate instrument and software. And also that is compatible with Vestor methods, which means that you can image the complete field of view and you can image in one acquisition three colors in uh, at 200 by 200 micron field of view which means that we have at the same speed compared to the standard market nanoscope, we have uh, more than 20 times more data in, at, uh, for one acquisition. Okay, so typically the single molecule localization can be used for different uh, uh, cell biology. For instance, you can uh, image cytoskeleton, you can image mitochondria, so metabolism uh, studies, you can image membranes, you can do bacteriology, neuroscience. You can look at neurons like I show you because thanks specifically thanks to the large field of view because you can follow during long time, during a long travel, the axon, for instance. You can look at nucleus and specifically you can look at clustering in the nucleus because it's some significant, some signature of cancer uh, diseases. And so the, the idea is that, uh, sorry, uh, uh, so to conclude, the idea is that the ABLI solution that is uh, that we offer is from simple preparation to data analysis and through the data imaging. And the our idea uh, of ABLI is that to offer a complete solution to help the biological researcher to get the best resolution, best, best resolution in 3D in multicolor with the largest field of view, and help him and help the researchers to become an expert. Uh, single molecule localization microscopy. So uh, I, would like, I would like to thank you. I'm ready to answer some questions.